Ours is not a big navy by superpower standards, but it is modern, well-equipped, and well used to operating in the sometimes stormy North Atlantic. Currently, the largest ship in the Royal Navy is the Invincible class of aircraft carrier. Like most other Royal Navy ships built since the mid-70s, they're powered by gas turbine engines which make them both fast and manoeuvrable. They're the first ships in the world to be equipped with the British-designed ski jump, which enables fixed-wing aircraft to take off with an increased payload. They carry the vertical takeoff and landing Sea Harrier aircraft. These can be fitted with a whole variety of weapon systems, but their main role is to provide aerial protection for the fleet. They are remarkable aircraft. Designed and built in the United Kingdom, they proved invaluable in the Falklands conflict, and they're now used by several other services, including the Royal Air Force and the United States Marines. The second major type of aircraft that will operate from these carriers are the anti-submarine Sea King helicopters. The Sea King has a crew of four, can fly in almost any weather, and stay airborne for several hours at a time. It would search for a submarine by dropping listening devices called Sono Boys, and then accurately locate it by using an airborne device called a dipping sonar. When the submarine is located, the helicopter itself could attack using an aerial launch torpedo or pass the information to other ships which might attack with their own helicopters. Nearly every ship in the Royal Navy has the ability either to search for or attack submarines, or both. The main ships in the Royal Navy for defending the area around a group of ships from air attack are the Type 42 destroyers. Again, British designed and built, they're capable of moving at over 30 knots and with computer-controlled machinery are so maneuverable that they can stop from full speed ahead in under two ships' lengths. Their main weapon system is the Sea Dart missile. Designed and built by the British Aircraft Corporation, it's reckoned to be one of the finest medium-range weapon systems in the world. They're also armed with the latest 4.5-inch gun, which is extremely accurate and can fire over 20 rounds a minute. This extreme accuracy and high rate of naval gunfire support for the land forces was one of the outstanding features of the Falklands campaign. The newest anti-submarine frigates at sea are the Type 22 class, similar to HMS Broadsword, seen here maneuvering at speed in the North Sea. Frigates are the workhorses of the Navy. A ship like this will have a crew of well over 200 and has the main role of hunting submarines. It is, however, also equipped with the Seawolf anti-missile missile, which is so accurate it can hit approaching shells. It's the extreme accuracy of this system which proved so effective during the Falklands campaign. Like the destroyers, frigates are also equipped with the Lynx helicopter, which is reckoned as being the finest deck landing helicopter in service with any Navy today. It is again British designed and built. It has many roles at sea, but the most important is to attack submarines. Ships of the fleet must be able to stay at sea for long periods, independent of shore support anywhere in the world. Fuel, food and ammunition must be brought to them wherever they are. This is done by the Royal Fleet Auxiliary in a fleet of ships designed specifically for the job. The crews are among the best in the merchant service, working closely with the Royal Navy in fair weather and foul. Another major anti-submarine craft, but one that doesn't need fuel replenishment at sea, is the nuclear-powered fleet submarine, and they will be operating with the various surface groups. They're driven by steam turbines, and the steam is generated by a nuclear reactor. They're very fast, they're the main anti-submarine submarine of the Royal Navy, and they're termed hunter-killers. They're fitted with long-range computer-assisted listening devices, and once a target is detected, they would close silently to deliver an attack using a homing torpedo. 
To attack enemy warships, these submarines are armed with sub-harpoon, which is an underwater launched missile. On reaching the surface, it flies at wave top height to intercept its target. The second major class of submarine in the Royal Navy are the patrol class, which are the modern equivalent of the World War II submarines. They're driven by electric motors run off batteries which are recharged by diesel engines. Running off these electric batteries, they're almost silent. They're ideal vessels for working close in shore, perhaps mine laying off an enemy coast, or working in support of an amphibious task force to land parties of Royal Marine special boat section ashore at night for clandestine reconnaissance. The Royal Marines are the Navy's sea soldiers, highly trained in amphibious warfare. They also provide the commando units, which are assigned to NATO for defense of the Atlantic Islands and Northern Europe, specifically Norway. Most of these commandos are Arctic trained and spend some of the coldest months of the year in Northern Norway, where they must expect to live in and fight in temperatures down to minus 40 degrees. Most of us would need all our efforts just to survive in these conditions. The Royal Marines don't just survive, they're able to move and fight in them as well. They're supported in the amphibious role by assault ships designed to lift them and their equipment to any part of the world and land them over a slipway or a beach. The Royal Marines also provide a specialist unit for the protection of our offshore oil interests. And if ever a terrorist organization tried to take over one of these platforms, it would be men of Camacho Group Royal Marines who would get it back again very quickly. Also close to home, in the mine warfare role, the newest design of mine hunter at sea is the Hunt class. These are the first ships of their size to be built entirely of glass reinforced plastic. Non-magnetic materials have been used extensively to ensure their safety when searching for magnetic mines. They search with high definition sonar and once a mine has been located, launch a remotely controlled vehicle and guide it down and alongside the mine to lay its counter charge. The vehicle then returns to the ship before the explosion. A major task for these vessels is to keep the sea approaches of the Clyde clear of mines because this area is the base for Polaris submarines with which the Royal Navy provides the United Kingdom's contribution to NATO's strategic nuclear deterrent. One of these submarines is always on patrol. Dive the submarine. Armed with 16 missiles, each one capable of delivering a devastating attack, a Polaris submarine stays hidden in the depths of the ocean for many weeks at immediate readiness to fire. It epitomizes, at the ultimate level, our determination to deter a nuclear attack on our country. Of course, control of these weapons lies entirely with our government. Starboard 20, altering 340. Starboard 20, altering 340. 20 of starboard on, sir. Vega. Passing 330. Midships. Midships. Steer 340. Steer 340. Course 340, sir. Vega. Hello, sir. The Nimrod has just reported a confirmed submarine 12 miles ahead of the main body. Captain, sir, the Nimrod has sonar void contact with a confirmed submarine 12 miles ahead of the main body. Action links. Action links. Our helicopter should be airborne and ready for VECTEC in just over four minutes. Roger, thank you. Bring the ship to action stations. Make sure Illustrious has got that Nimrod report. Off the watch. I'm going to the ops room. All right, sir. Action stations, action stations. Assume NVCD state one Zulu. Action stations, action stations. 
starboard 15. Subsurface director, do we have any sign of a contact? Yes, sir, we have a likely contact on the history display, which fits in well with the Nimrod contact. The contact is building into a firm echo, I suggest possible submarine. Agreed, classify contact 17, Possob high confidence. Roger, sir. Captain, sir, this is missile director. The air warning is now red, assess missile attack imminent. Uh, Roger, are both Seawolf systems serviceable? Forward Seawolf stood to Seawolf 6. After Seawolf stood to Seawolf 6. Affirmative, sir. No faults on either system. Bridge, flight deck. Permission to launch 424. Roger Green. Check switches and settings. Roger. One mile, check height, check speed. Roger. Half a mile, standby drop. Standby out. Drop now, now, now. Freelance investigate. Sonar contact, a bearing uh, 240, range 2000, HE on the bearing 240, torpedo. Ostwatch, take torpedo counter measures. Starboard 30, lever 60. Lever 60. Both levers set, 60 ahead, sir. Very good. Action stews, Mark 46, urgent attack. Suggest uh, starboard tubes, recommend the course 285. Off the watch, come slow right 285. East to 10, 10. altering 285. Altering 285. Ready to attack. Engage with stews. Assess Stu's attack successful. Roger. Well done. A useful exercise this morning. As usual, a number of important lessons to be learned. Excuse me, sir. Immediate signal from FO Plymouth. Uh, navigator, I've got an immediate from Flag Officer Plymouth. Uh, there's a car ferry in trouble in the South Irish Sea. It looks as if it could be bad trouble. A yeoman's bringing the signal up to the bridge. Uh, plot the position and get me a course to steer. Start both Olympus, I'll want 28 knots. Start heading in the general direction.